Today, actually, we'll, we'll try to cover uh, the more general topic, which we will solve the single uh, phase flow, but for gas. And as you know, gas is compressible, right? This is our, uh, we, we call it mass balance equation or mass conservation equation. Uh, and it's general actually for fluid flow. And in this case, we will not ignore the time derivative term or we, uh, we say also accumulation term. Mm -hmm. We will treat this equation. We will try to solve this equation in some several cases, including uh, 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 the region around well. All right, I will, uh, let me remind you about the component or terms of this equation. U, of course, is the velocity vector, and, and you can remember, uh, if you remember well, uh, vector means has three components in X, Y, Z. Or if we are working in cylindrical coordinates, it will be R, theta, Z, and so on. And phi is the porosity, uh, rho is the gas density. So now, now we are talking about uh, gas example, right? Uh, a Q is the sink term. I said sink, sink because we will treat the production well as a sink, right? The gas is taken from the reservoir, so it will uh, represent it as sink. And actually, we, we, we can drop this one as we, as we will see later and uh, consider the sink in the boundary condition instead of equation. And time here, of course, is uh, representing time. So now we have uh, independent variables as time and uh, x, y, z for the spatial uh, or Cartesian coordinate or cylindrical coordinate, or spatial coordinate, spatial co or, or space coordinate. Okay, so we are focusing on on the r or radial direction and has. Uh, infinite extent means we will use a uh, far boundary condition maybe as constant pressure. We will assume also because the shape of well is cylindrical, we, we will assume it is asymmetric. Asymmetric means is symmetry around the axis of cylinder. All these, the flow in each of uh, radians here are similar to each other. We'll assume our reservoir is homogeneous. And this reason, for this reason, we, we actually, uh, or this, this assumption means that K is constant. When D means uh, this, the flow, for example, here, huh, similar to this one, to the elect one, all right? means the angle theta is not important here. Yani we will give similar, it doesn't, uh, yani, right? So also we'll assume the is hat means the layers, the layer here and here, 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 all are similar. Mm. Okay, that's why we also ignore or assume it's, it's similar yani, uh, uh, with respect to the height also. That's why we will study only one problem. And, and actually it is, kind of simplification. Huh? Before, yeah, before simplifying, this is our full equation, this one, huh? the continuity equation, but in cylindrical uh, coordinates. Actually, uh, if you study uh, math, I think calculus or any other course of math, it's, it's basic courses actually. Uh, it is easy to transfer our system or our differential equation from one Cartesian, uh, from one uh, uh, system to another, let's say from Cartesian coordinates system to cylindrical coordinates state. So the, the, the continuity equation or the gas flow equation in 3D can be written as this one. And in this case, uh, we have R theta Z. This is in 3D, huh? This one in, Oh, yes. Three dimension. So we have, of course, the right hand side actually is in time. Time is scalar. We don't care about this one. It doesn't, it doesn't matter for uh, special coordinate. But for this one, we have 
three terms. The first term is of R, and the second term, theta, the color, and the third one is about or of Z. Here R, if you can see R is the first coordinate, and we should have this one over R, or one over R square, or even this shape is related to the, the cylindrical coordinates, because in Cartesian coordinates, we don't have this coefficient, right? So if you remember, this is coming from Darcy's law, right? If I consider only one D, then I will drop these two terms, right? First term of R will only remain uh, based on our assumption. So in 1D, cylindrical coordinates are uh, our equation takes this form. Uh, so stop here and keep this form, I mean. And let's do some uh, analysis for the time derivative term, or we, we say accumulation term. Why? Because we, we have density here. Now, this, uh, we can't solve this form, uh, this equation in, in the current form, in, in this form, I mean, why? Because we have one more variable, one more unknown. One, o, one of them is P and the second one is rho. To find another equation to couple or convert them uh, uh, and to be one variable. How can we do this? We will return back to the ideal gas law ideal gas law, which is equation of state, right? Equation of state in the mass form, if you, if you remember from our course in thermodynamic, uh, uh, we have, this is uh, equation of state. Uh, we say this one is the mass form, huh? mass form. Why we use this mass form? Because it has a relation with density. Density is de de uh, defined as uh, mass divided by volume. Right, so we can bring the definition of m over v over v from from the equation of state. So uh, um, this is constant because because now we don't have we don't have variation of temperature. So our our system is isothermal. So we will call m g divided by r t as a constant a new constant called gamma. All right. We can write now our accumulation term. This one term. Our accumulation term, which is time dependent, time dependent term or accumulation term, can be written in this form. So we'll we'll replace this new definition hmm, in this right hand side. Okay. The left hand side, I'm sorry. All right. So now we can write our problem in this form. But both, you know, this phi gamma was inside the uh, derivative sign here. Now you can take it out because they are constant, huh? Phi and gamma are constant, but P is not, P is pressure, right? Also, we had we had we had rho here. To, uh, rho, this is rho, and we have another rho here. Don't forget this one, because we are not focusing on, on one term and leaving the other. We have one rho appears. Replace gamma b this one with rho in both terms. So if we just put it gamma B here, we'll take, this is constant, take it out. And uh, we have gamma also, we, we can take this gamma uh, out here outside the time uh, outside. Uh, yeah. So now we have, these are constant, gamma also constant. We have also K and nu, both of them are constant, right? We'll be able to, 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 to have them outside, uh, outside the uh, derivative. But R is not constant, right? R is, is variable coordinates. So 
what remain inside is R, P, and the derivative of PR. All right, all of them inside this derivative. And we have R here also. But uh, now gamma will, will be dropped. Uh, by the way, we ignored Q. We ignored Q, huh? Q, I, I will, will, will uh, in our solution, we, we consider the boundary condition, so we can ignore it. But Q equals zero. Okay. So uh, now let's drop gamma and take Q and mu to the right hand side to become to uh, uh, like this. We have a, a new parameter which is phi Q. Uh, you can write it actually by the way, firstly here. All right. So uh, let's take mu uh, or k over mu to the left hand side to be mu over q and we have k. So this is constant. All of this constant. We'll just put in this simple term because partial p by partial t is a simple term is different from this one. This is one. Uh, it's a bit complicated term, right? Yes. Because yes. We'll, we'll still need to expand it. So, and instead of writing three coefficients like this, we replaced uh, with a new symbol called uh, uh, chi, okay? We'll, we'll just rewrite it like this and replace this phi mu over k with a new term, chi, like this, all right? This is our now our target uh, equation. We want to uh, know more about it and think about how to how can we solve it. The second is b and the third is partial b partial r. We leave them as they are, and we take the derivative for r only for the first one, right? Plus, we'll do we will fix r, but r as it is. It's it's better to be in the beginning. All right, and take the derivative for the second. So the, first, the derivative of the first one is partial r by partial r. And we'll, we'll leave p partial p partial r as they are. And let's, let's put some color here also. Okay, now compare okay. compare between this one and this one, right? Yeah. Okay. Now R will leave R as it is. The third one leave R as it is. Leave P as it is. And take the derivative of the third one, we'll uh, drop this one equals one, partial pi by partial r equal what? This r cancel this r, and partial p by partial r, same as this one. So uh, partial p by partial r squared. And here also r cancels this r, 